large city and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. job, and it makes a man watchful, and a little lonely. coming to Dodge looking for you or that you've got to go somewhere and look for them. <laughs> Either way, it spells trouble. Well, if it wasn't for trouble, Doc, I wouldn't have a job. Well, then you ought to quit. It's a poor thing when a man has to make a living off of other people's troubles. Uh-huh. Tell me something, Doc. How long has it been since anybody came up to you and told you how good they were feeling? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> I guess we are pretty much alike after all, man. Uh-oh. Close the house Chester. Yeah? I got it, Mr. Dunn. What are you looking so glum about, Chester? What does it say? You better read it yourself. Kind of private line. Huh? U.S. Marshal, Dodge City, Kansas. Coming to get married. Noon train. Saturday. Meet me. I'm Mavis McLeod. Oh, oh Mavis McLeod. Eh? Oh, that's a right pretty name, Matt. <laughs> she pretty too? Mr. Dunn, you really going to get married? Oh, you're pretty foxy, Matt, keeping us so quiet. Now, wait a minute, you two. If you're all through talking, I'll tell you something. Oh, now, quiet now, Chester. Don't say anything. This is an important moment. Well, I'm listening. All right. Now, uh, this may be kind of a shock to you, but... Well, as my two closest friends, I wanted you to be the first to know. Yeah? Mr. Dillon, yeah? Doc? Yes. Chester? Mm-hmm. I'm not about to get married, and once more, I never heard of any Mavis McLeod. Well, she still might be perfect. I don't care if she looks like Lily Langtree. But Mr. Dillon ain't even going to meet her? Yeah, I'm going to meet her, but right now, let's go get some breakfast and talk about something else. <laughs> Straight up noon, and there comes old thing right on time. Yeah? I mean, it's troubling you, ain't it? No, no, Chester. I think train should run on time. Yeah, sure, that's what I mean. Hey, look. Look at that. Sit what? kitty going into people over there, see? I'm Chester. Mr. Dillon, I swear I never said a word to her about this. She's probably expecting some mail or packages or something. Anyway, she never seen that. Maybe it's McLeod's man by else. I don't know. Look, 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 there's a girl. Would that be her, you think? Would that be her? Chester, I told you I never even heard of her. How would I know what she looks like? Well, that little girl's right pretty, Mr. Dunn. She's the only female lady there. Okay, let's go ask her then. I'd, uh, I'd judge her to be about 18, wouldn't you? Yeah, about that. She might say she's pretty much. She is pretty much. Excuse me, miss. Yes? Uh, I'm Matt Dillon. Oh, well, maybe you can help me. Oh, well, maybe. I'm looking for the U.S. Marshal here. Do you know him? Well, I'm the Marshal, ma'am. Oh, oh, you are? Then you got my telegram. I did. 
Well, that's right. You, you didn't have my name on it, did you? Of course not. How would I know your name? Oh. Oh. Oh, my goodness. I... Oh. Well, you didn't think I was coming to marry you, did you? Well. Oh, how awful. I mean, how awful for you. Oh, well, I, I'm still a little confused. Oh, oh uh, this is Chester Proctor. How do you do, Chester? Well, I'm proud to know you, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm so yeah. sorry, Marshal Dillon. I, I guess I could have explained more in the telegram. Oh, that's all right. Uh, who did you come here to marry? Well, I don't know. You don't know? Well, not yet. I just got here. You two are the only men I've met. Uh, to Chester. Yes, sir. Go over to the depot there and see if you can find Kitty, will you? Yes, sir. I sure will. Uh, Davis, uh, how, how old are you? I'll be 19 in December. No? So, where are you from? I won't tell you. Well, why not? Because it isn't polite for a gentleman to ask a lady so many personal questions. All right. Well, why did you send me that telegram? Because I thought I'd be safe with the marshal helping me. Well, helping you do what? Get married. Oh, don't look like that. I'm not crazy. They need women out here, don't they? Well, don't they? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, they, they need them. And I'll make a good wife, too. But, of course, it'll have to be the right man, Marshal. I, I won't marry just anybody, you know. And you can stop shaking your head like that. John, I found her. Hello, Matt. Uh, Kitty, uh, this is Mavis McLeod. Hello, Mavis. Welcome to Dodge. Oh, thank you, Kitty. Uh, Kitty. I know Matt. Chester told me all about her. Thanks. Don't mind the marshal, Mavis. Sometimes he's a little slow to understand these things. He most certainly is. Uh, he's been looking at me as though I were a bug of some kind. <laughs> Kitty, you take care of her, will you? Uh, I'll go try to figure something out. Yeah. She'll be okay. And, uh... Kitty, don't, uh... Oh, don't worry. I won't take it as long, Vance. Okay. Uh, you, you, you let me know if you need anything, Mavis. Uh, besides the husband, I mean. called it love at first sight. But anyway, I, I knew Barney, and he was a sober, hard-working cowboy who'd started a little spread of his own not far from Dodge. It was a good match. But it looked like they were going to make out fine. At least I thought so. Until one day when I was sitting in my office trying to keep cool. I'm looking for Marshal Bill. That's him sitting right there. Come on in, Mr. Mr. My name's Lou Staley, Marshal. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Staley? I've come a long way. Huh? All the way from St. Louis. I'm looking for Mavis McLeod. Oh. Well, what do you want with her? That's my business. Well, that may be. Where is she? What makes you think I'd know? She sent you a telegram from St. Louis. I knew she was headed out here somewhere, so I checked. Mavis isn't the kind to arrive in a place unknown. I see. You gonna tell me where she is? Not till I know why you want to see her. And I'll find her myself. She's around here somewhere. She's married, Staley. What? She's married. Now, why don't you go on back to St. Louis and forget about it, huh? Who'd she marry? What difference does it make? You're not going to bother her. We'll see about that. In the meantime, I hold you responsible. Okay, so you hold me responsible. Why don't we settle that right now? I'll find her first, Marshal. And after I've killed her husband, I'll come looking for you. Well, 
Now there is about the bloodthirstiest man I ever did see. I declare he's going to kill everybody. He might try it, Chester. I think I better ride out and talk to Barney Wales. Oh, sure, not today, you ain't. What? Well, Barney and Mavis is in town today. I seen them over at the Dodge House this morning. They're staying the night there. And I'll go find them there before Lou Staley does. <laughs> How are you, Mavis? Oh, I'm fine. I mean, we're fine. Aren't we, Barney? We sure are. you got to ride out and have dinner with us some Sunday, Marshal. Mavis, here's the best doggone cook you ever saw. Oh, it'd be strange if a girl from St. Louis couldn't cook. Why'd you say that, Marshal? Mavis ain't from St. Louis. At least why she never told me she was. It doesn't matter where I'm from, does it, Barney? Of course not. But how'd the marshal know? There's only one way. Lou told him. Lou? Yes, Lou Staley. Well, who's he, Marshal? I don't know, Barney. But he says he's going to kill you. What? For Marion Mavis. I see. He loves you, too, is that it? No. No, not exactly. Well, what then? I made up the name McLeod Barney. My real name is Staley. There's only one thing I want to know, Mavis. Yes? You love him? I hate him. Okay. Let him come, Marshal. I'll fight him. No. You go out to your ranch. I'll take care of Staley. I never run from a fight in my life, and I don't aim to start now. Oh, please, Barney. It's no use arguing. If this Bailey's looking for me, he can find me. I'll go about my business like always, but I'll sure keep one eye open. and he told me I'd find Lou Staley here. I've got to talk to him. It, it probably won't do any good, but I've got to try. Well, he's over there at the bar. I know, I saw him. But I, I didn't dare walk up to the bar and not with all those men watching. Okay, Mavis, I'll get him. 
No, I guess I won't have to. I knew I'd find you sooner or later, my lady. I want to talk to you, Lou. It's too late for talk. I told you what I'd do, and I'm going to do it. Lou, I want to talk to you alone. You can go out back, Mavis. Door's right over there. Nobody will bother you outside. Come on. Won't do any good, Mavis. You know it won't. I don't like this, Kitty. Um, why not? Talking's better than fighting, isn't it? Uh, talking isn't going to stop him. Now, there's something wrong about him. Sort of like he, he can't hear or see anything but himself. Like he's all alone in the world. Well, any man in love acts like that now. Uh, maybe, but if I didn't think he'd just keep coming back, I'd tie him up and throw him on a train for back east. Well, I wish you'd do something. Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, look, it's Mavis. 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 Did he kill her? No, no, she's still alive. Well, you go after Staley, Matt. I'll take care of her. I'll get Staley, Kitty. And I'm going to carry Mavis over to Doc's first. And you better come along. <laughs> All right, 
right, Barney, you coward. Where are you? Hold it right there. Stay late. Oh. She's doing fine. Now, here we are. Wait a minute, Marshal. Yeah. About last night, I'd have found Lou Staley somehow, and I'd have killed him any way I could, Marshal. It might have been murder, Bernie. Yeah. I guess this is the first time I ever thanked a man for knocking me out. Let's go on in now. Mavis, Doc. Well, she's in the back room there. Well, except for a little fever, she's coming along fine, Barney, just fine. Of course, you'll have to stay quiet for a few days. You can't be moving her around. Can I see her now, Doc? Sure, you go ahead. Matt, Mavis told me about the shooting. You know what happened? What, Doc? She tried to take Stady's gun away from him, that's what. They were fighting over it, and it went off. He didn't try to kill her at all. You know, it's funny about Staley. What? Most men would have tried to kill a wife that ran off and married somebody else. A wife? Yeah. Is that something? Oh, you don't. And Mavis seems like such a nice girl. Well, you never know, Doug. Mark, you going? Yeah. Mavis would like to see. Okay. Hello, Marshal. Mavis. There's something I want to tell you, Marshal. Okay. Barney already knows. I told him yesterday after you left. Go on. Well, it's about Lou. I know what you think. But I've known him all my life, Marshal. And Lou was crazy. There was something wrong with him. I guess I was ashamed of it. Or I'd have told everybody sooner. Especially Barney. You're not responsible for his being crazy. No, no. Wait. Lou always did say he'd kill any man I married. That's why I ran away. Mavis, you were asking an awful lot of a husband, crazy or not. Marshal... Lou Staley wasn't my husband. He was my brother. What? You know, Mavis, you've been nothing but trouble to me ever since I got that telegram. And I don't ever want to see you again. (laughs) Unless it's across your dining room table some Sunday. in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Barbara Eiler, and Sam Edwards. Barley Bear is Chester, Howard McNeil is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.